I'm Councillor Susan Durant, Chair of Planning Committee. The members of the Planning Committee present today are the Vice Chair, Councillor Sue McGuinness, Councillor Duncan Anderson, Iris Beach, Mick Cooper, Steve Cox, John Healy, Charlie Hogarth, Andy Pickering and Jonathan Wood. I will now ask the committee members to introduce themselves in alphabetical order to ensure that they are in attendance and can hear proceedings. Can I ask that when you are not speaking, please keep your microphone on mute. Councillor McGuinness. Good morning. Good morning. Councillor Anderson. Oh. Chair, I'm trying to call him. He's not answering, so hopefully he'll be with us shortly. Okay, thank you. Councillor Beach. Yes, here, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Cooper. Here, Chair. Thank Morning, you. Morning, everybody. Morning. Councillor Cox. Present, Miss. <laughs> okay. Uh, Councillor Healy. Uh, present, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Hogarth. Present, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Pickering. Present, Chair. And Councillor Wood. Yes, Chair. Thank you. Uh, have we managed to get out of uh, Councillor Anderson yet? Not yet, Chair. He's, I'm okay. still calling, but he, whether he's on another line, I don't know. He might be on a phone call, so okay. I'll, I'll keep trying him. Yeah, no problem. Uh, we have a number of Doncaster Council officers in attendance and will be supporting the meeting. We have Roy Sykes, Head of Planning, Gary Hildersley, Planning Development Manager. We have Andrew Sudders, who is the Principal Planning Officer and Planning Case Officer, and Stacey Cutler, Senior Legal Officer. Just two seconds. My script has just froze. This is where you go and it gets emailed the day before because it's changed with people attending. Bear with me, please. Okay, yeah, it's working now. Okay, we also have Steve Shannon, the Strategic Infrastructure Manager, Daniel Atkinson, the Trees and Hedgerow Officer, Amber Torrington and Sarah Maxfield, Governance Services. In respect of application one, we have Mr Jameson, Hodgson, <coughs> the applicant, and Mrs Nicola Goodwin, Nigel Goodwin, Funeral Directors, in support of the application. In respect of application two, we have local ward member councillor Cynthia Ransom and parish councillor Pamela Moore out in opposition to the application. And in respect of application three, we have councillor Phil Cole in opposition to the application and Mr Stephen Bayfield, the applicant and local ward member councillor Ian Pearson in support of the application. I will now ask the other attendees to introduce themselves to ensure that they are in attendance and can hear the proceedings. Roy. Good morning, present chair. Thank you. Gary. Morning, Chair. Morning. Andrea. Morning, Chair. Thank you. Stacey. Present, Chair. Thank you. Steve. Not here yet, Chair. Thank you. Daniel. Uh, good morning, Chair. Morning. Amber. Morning, Chair. Morning. Sarah. Morning, Chair. Thank you. Mr Hodgson. Good morning, Chair. Morning. Mrs. Goodwin. Good morning, Chair. Morning. Councillor Ransom. Morning, Chair. Morning. Parish Councillor Morehouse. She's here, Chair. She's just on mute. Okay, thank Sorry. you. I've unmuted. Yes, I'm here, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Cole. Is not present yet, Chair. Okay, thank you. Mr. Bayfield. Present, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Pearson. Present, Miss. Thank you. We also have all the members of the public and press attending the virtual meeting as observers. May I point out that the microphones of any external attendees, such as the press and public, will be muted during the meeting, but will need to be unmuted if they are requested to address the committee. If anyone intends to record today's meetings, please ensure that this does not disturb the conduct of the meeting and ensure that your mobile phones are switched to silent mode. I would like to inform members of the public and press that today's meeting will be audio visually recorded. By joining the meeting, you accept that you will be recorded and your images retained and broadcast by the Council. 
The meeting is proceeding today on the basis that all members of the committee have read their agenda papers thoroughly and are aware of what they will be considering today. If any member of the committee leave the virtual meeting during consideration of the application, they should ensure they do not take part in the vote on their return, as they will not have heard all the relevant information on this particular item. In addition, if anyone who is participating in the meeting or listening to the debate is disconnected, officers will inform me as chair when this becomes apparent. I will adjourn the meeting to allow officers to reconnect the individual concerned. When the individual has rejoined the meeting, I will reconvene the meeting and debate on the application will continue. I would like to outline how the meeting will be conducted. At the onset, it is important to set out that the applications are being considered in the order they appear on the agenda today, because this is the order in which the applications were validated by the planning service. When we get to the formal items of business to be considered, I will ask the officer to introduce the report for application one. Upon the conclusion of their presentation, I will ask any individual who has requested to speak if they wish to address the committee. At the conclusion of their speech, I will ask any member of the committee to indicate by raising their hand if they wish to speak or ask the speaker a question. After all individuals who have requested to speak have spoken, we will then repeat the same process for applications two and three. Once all applications have been presented, questions have been asked of speakers, members will debate all three applications together. As part of the debate, I will ask each member of the committee to indicate by raising their hand if they wish to comment on the report or ask the planning case officer a question. I will then ask the planning case officer to respond immediately to any questions which have been put and require a response. After every committee member has had the opportunity to speak, I will ask a final time. If any committee member wishes to speak again by the raising of their hand. If no member wishes to speak again, I will invite the planning case officer to provide a summary of all three of the applications prior to moving to the vote on each application. I will move and read out the recommendation within the reports in turn and ask for the motion to be moved and seconded. I will then ask each committee member individually if they agree the recommendation or whether they wish to abstain or refuse the motion. Is that clear? Thank you. Item one is apologies for absence. An apology for absence has been received from Councillor Eva Hughes. Do we have any other apologies? No chair, but I'm tra we're trying to get hold of Councillor Anderson, but he's not available as yet. So hopefully we'll come in and eventually. Okay. I think Councillor Hogarth. Yeah, I just want to uh, clarify. To be able to involve in the decision, do you need to be present at all three? <clears throat> yes, you would need to be present through all three applications, realistically. Yeah, just clarifying it. So, sorry, Chair, can I just interject? Oh. I, I'd also like to point out that if Councillor Anderson isn't here for the legal advice section, I'd, you know, I wouldn't be comfortable with him taking part in the vote because you need, he needs to hear all of it. Okay. So can, can we wait perhaps a few minutes to see if Councillor Anderson can join? Yeah, I'll just do the uh, items two and three, Stacey, and then uh, we'll have a, a little pause okay, to see if we can get out of Councillor Anderson. OK, item two is exclusion of press and public. There are no items on the agenda. Well, the public and press are to be ex excluded. Is that agreed? Agreed. Agreed. OK. Item three is declarations of interest. Are there any declarations of interest, please? No, Chair. OK, thank you for that. If there are any declarations, that you need to contact Amber to co uh, obtain a declaration form to complete forward it to government services. OK, therefore, what we're going to do now is we're just trying to contact Councillor Duncan Anderson. Uh, we're just going to have a, a few minutes uh, pause. Uh, so bear with us, please. Continue with the meeting. So item five is planning applications for the new crematoria. Advice from members of the planning committee in relation to the decisions. Um, this report is for noting, so I'm going to invite Casey St uh, sorry, Stacey Cutler, Senior Legal Officer, to introduce the item. 
Thank you, Chair. Um, before I introduce my report, I'd just like to offer some advice to members about lobbying materials and correspondence they may have received from one or more applicants or their representatives in relation to the proposals under consideration at the meeting today. Members can read materials they are sent in relation to planning applications, but members need to be mindful that they will only be in a position to take a final decision on an application after they have heard all the relevant arguments and have taken into account all the relevant material and planning considerations at the committee meeting. So members should therefore ensure they have come to the meeting with an open mind. Turning then to the legal report in your agenda pack, its purpose is to guide members as to a lawful approach to determining these three applications. As you know, decisions must be made in accordance with the development plan unless material considerations indicate otherwise. The planning officer considers that all three applications are contrary to the development plan, but material considerations may justify a departure from the development plan. You will hear from the planning officer that the need for one or more new crematoria is a material planning consideration. It's important to say at the outset that each application must be determined on its own merits, but the impact of the proposal on the borough's need position is a material consideration common to all three proposals, therefore warranting a comparison of the schemes. In that comparative exercise, need is an important material consideration to be weighed into the planning balance. The Council's consultant's report concludes that there is a clear need. So the extent to which an application meets that need is an important material consideration. Another important material consideration is the adverse effects of these applications and the extent to which they're constrained by planning policy. I referred you in the report to the Greater London Council case, and that case indicates that where need can be met on an alternative site, which has less environmental impact or is less constrained in planning policy terms, then that is an important factor to take into account alongside need. So the recommendation is that report be noted, members. Thank you. Thank you. Does any member wish to speak on this item? Would you please indicate by the raising of the hand? Okay, nothing showing on my screen there. Uh, can I ask that the committee members move? That the no, uh, report be noted. Move, Chair. Noted, Chair. Okay, thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, just one moment. Uh, can somebody hear something in the background? Yes. Yeah, there's like a feedback loop. Yeah, chair. there's some noise in the background. Okay, I'll try the best I can to uh, uh, ignore it. <laughs> okay. Item 5 is the schedule of applications and prior to the start of the applications, can I invite the Andrew Stood as the planning case officer to introduce a consultant's report to the council on the borough's need for a new crematoria from Peter Mitchell Associates. Thank you, Chair. I'm just going to share my screen with you. Sorry, just bear with me. I'm just trying to no problem. find the screen. There we go. So, <clears throat> Doncaster's in the very unusual position of... Um, Doncaster's in the very unusual position of having three planning applications submitted for crematoria in the borough. They've been submitted independently by three different operators Dignity, Horizon and, Mem and Memoria, and they're in three different areas of the borough. This map shows the three sites. Number one is the Armthorpe Lane at Barnby Dunn. Number two is Green Lane at Brodsworth. And number three is Sheffield Road at Conisborough. We've therefore appointed an independent external consultant to firstly establish if there was a need for another crematorium and if so, where the best location was in terms of being the most effective in relieving the pressure from Rose Hill. Peter Mitchell Associates produced a report dated November 2020, 
which has identified a need for another crematorium and it's also assessed the submitted needs reports for the three application sites. So this, this slide shows his key findings um, and the highlights of this report indicate that Rose Hill Crematorium operated at 155% between 2016 and 2019. Annual deaths in Doncaster are projected to increase by 23% between 2020 and 2043. The majority of areas within Doncaster with higher population densities lie within a 30 minute drive time of Rose Hill or Barnby Dunn. Developing Barnby Dunn would bring 33,123 people within a 30 minute drive time of a crematorium for the first time and result in the greatest population loss to Rose Hill at 64,926 or minus 32% of the current population for Rose Hill. Developing Conisborough would bring 15,922 people within a 30 minute drive time of a crematorium for the first time and result in a loss to Rose Hill of 60,598 or minus 28% of the current population for Rose Hill. Developing Brodsworth would bring 23,156 people within a 30 minute drive time of a crematorium for the first time and result in a loss to Rose Hill of 56,560 or minus 26% of the current population for Rose Hill. Um, in terms of developing more than one um, crematorium, if both Conisborough and Barnby Dunn were developed, the viability of Rose Hill and Barnby Dunn would be doubtful. If both Brodsworth and Barnby Dunn were developed, Barnby Dunn wouldn't be viable. If both Brodsworth and Conisborough were developed, the viability of one would be doubtful. So his report concludes that Rose Hill is operating above capacity and there's a need for a new crem crematorium and the Barnby Dunn site would be the most effective in relieving the pressure on Rose Hill. The consultant's conclusion is based on drive time catchment areas and not planning policy. So each application must therefore be considered on its own merits, but the consideration of need is common to all three. Thank you, Chair. You're muted, Apologies. Chair. You're on mute. Thank you. OK. Application number one and application one nine oblique zero two four three four oblique F U L M. Can I invite Andrea Sudders, the planning case officer, to introduce this item? Andrea. Thanks, Chair. I'll just share my screen again. So just do the pre-committee amendments first. <clears throat> um, there's two speakers for this application. Um, Jameson Hodgson, the applicant, and Nicola Goodwin from Goodwin Funeral Directors, uh, both speaking in support. Um, there's a, an amendment to the report. There's removal of conditions seven and eight only due to duplication. Number 11 isn't removed as per your pre-committee notes and should now remain. There's also an amendment to condition 25. This changes the trigger for cycle parking details um, to prior to use rather than prior to commencement of development on site. I'm just going to show you before we start a video footage of the site. Chair, if I could just come in, that isn't actually displaying on, on my screen, so you may need to share your screen again, Andrea, just to highlight okay. the video yeah. footage. Yeah, sorry, I thought that was coming through. Okay. 
I'll start that again. Thank you. Chair, sorry, I think we've lost Councillor Healy. I'm just, we're just trying to get him back in. Okay, thank you. Uh, if you want to get that back to the beginning of the video, Andrea, yeah. I'll wait for uh, Councillor Healy to rejoin the meeting. He's back. Oh, he's on hold, Chair, so I don't know why he's on hold. Okay. We're trying to get hold of him. Yeah. He's, he's back, I think, Chair, now. Councillor Healy, do we have you back with us? You certainly do, Chair. Thank you very much. <laughs> OK, thank you for that. All right, Andrew, yeah, I'll, like on. I'll, show the, I'll show the video. Yeah, thanks, Chair. If you need me to show you that video again at any point, just let me know and I'll, I'll show it again for you. Thank you. So I just want to, that's it. So looking at the, the layout um, for the Barmbidon scheme, it provides a new crematorium, car parking, new access road, gardens of remembrance and an area for natural and traditional burials. In terms of the policy considerations, this site's located within a designated countryside policy area where core strategy policy CS3 and UDP policy EMV4 seeks to protect and enhance the countryside and sets out criteria of acceptable development. Crematoria development is not an acceptable development, therefore the proposal is inconsistent with countryside policy. So whilst there's no requirement to demonstrate very special circumstances, unlike Greenbelt policy, um, need must be demonstrated to override the harm. The benefits of developing this site are substantial in that it would provide the greatest impact on the current overcapacity at Rose Hill, and it would bring the highest number of people within a 30 minute drive time of a crematorium for the first time. This site is more suitable than Brodsworth or Conisborough as they are both greenbelt sites where substantial weight must be attached to harm to the greenbelt and very special circumstances need to be demonstrated to outweigh that harm by reason of inappropriateness. So need would count as very special circumstances. However, in this case, the advice from the consultant is that Barn Be Done is best able to address the need for a new crematorium. This site is also less constrained in planning policy terms, so it's preferred over the proposals at Brodsworth and Conisborough. The consultants advise that by developing Barn Be Done will have the greatest impact on overcapacity at Rose Hill, so the need for another crematorium is deemed to outweigh 
um, policy harm as defined by policy EMV4 and justifies a departure from the development plan. A landscape visual impact assessment has also been submitted and assessed by an external consultant who's concluded that the impact on the countryside land landscape will be negligible for this site. I'm looking at the floor plans and elevations. The building itself is um, divided into three elements. There's the chapel building, which forms the focal structure of the site. An administrative area comprises the waiting area and the office, an interview room, lobby and toilet facilities. The main crematory contains the crematory equipment. There's an outside service yard and close by fencing, which lies further to the west of the building. The building's single storey, um, the proposed materials comprise of a render finish with stone buttresses. The urban design officer has raised no issue with the design, but has suggested brick rather than render. So um, a condition is included for materials to be agreed. This slide shows a um, broad 3D view of the finished site. The Cremations Act of 1902 determines the siting of the buildings. It requires crematoriums to be sited 200 yards away from any dwelling house except without consent and not within 50 yards of any public highway. The site would be well landscaped as you could see and a condition is included for these details to be agreed. As part of the development, it will require a new access from Armthorpe Lane. Um, the new access would include a ghost right turn um, from Armthorpe Lane and there would be parking provision for 100 vehicles on site. It also includes hedgerow removal to uh, accommodate the new access. The tree officer did ask for an alternative access position to be investigated, but having just discussed this with highways, this isn't possible. And as parts of the hedgerow are also heavily damaged by HGVs, the tree office is now satisfied with part of its removal, subject to a condition for a landscaping scheme to be agreed. Highways are satisfied with the proposed access details and subject to the usual conditions. The transport office is satisfied with the traffic data. They've used a worst case scenario of 100 vehicles per service modelled for the proposed access over the peak hours and there's been no capacity problems at the junction. So the transport officer is satisfied with all the data contained within the uh, transport assessment. All of the consultees are content with the proposal subject to mitigation by conditions. So on balance, this application is recommended for approval. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Thank you. OK, the applicant, Mr Jameson Hodgson, has requested to speak in support of the application. This is now your opportunity to address the committee for up to five minutes. Please mute your microphone when you've concluded your submission and we will let you know when you've got one minute remaining. <coughs> Mr Hodgson, would you like to commence? Thank you, Chair. Chair, councillors, thank you for the opportunity to speak before you today, albeit virtually. We are conscious that you have three applications to determine, all of which must be considered on their own merits. We are, however, pleased that your officer acknowledges the merits of our application with their positive recommendation, the only one of the three to receive this. Given the unusual position of the council receiving three crematoria applications at a similar time, your officer has gone to great lengths to seek external and independent advice regarding need and site suitability. It is clear from their findings that there is one, a need for one additional crematorium locally, but not for three. Two, our proposed site would have the best impact on the overcapacity at Rose Hill out of the three options before you. And three, the location of our site outside of the green belt is best sited and least constrained. We started looking for sites in this part of Doncaster in 2015. Today is the culmination of five years hard work in finding and securing the best site to sustainably serve the area. Our application received no objections from statutory consultees and only two from local residents. 
our pre-application consultation exercise demonstrated clear community support with 70% of local residents offering complete support with a further 9% of qualified support. We pride ourselves on being a family run business with over 90 years collective experience. We work hard to deliver memorial parks that provide dignity and respect for bereaved families, whilst also being attractive schemes that sit comfortably in their setting and are positive additions to local communities. Our proposal looks to address the gap in service that currently exists for 133,000 people in Doncaster. Rose Hill Crematorium has been operating at over 150% practical capacity for several years, and with annual death rates due to rise by 23% over the next 20 years, this issue is only going to get worse. Currently, some bereaved families not only have to suffer long journey times, but at certain times of the year can be waiting up to three weeks for a convenient service time. I hope you would agree that this is unacceptable and needs to be addressed. To this end, our proposals would take the top level of capacity pressure off Rose Hill and allow bereaved families more choice, not just in location, but by virtue of offering more service times and more flexible service length, something which is very difficult to accommodate at present. We chose our site off Armthorpe Lane for a number of reasons, including how well screened it is and its connectivity to the local road network. Only 20% of the site would be developed, with the remaining 80% being kept green with extensive landscaping and mature planting. In addition, we plan to enhance biodiversity with anticipated net gains expected of 90% for broad habitats. Regarding the local road network, the council's transportation officer is content that the level of additional traffic is not considered to be significant with the majority of services taking place outside of peak hours. So in conclusion, our proposals have your officer's positive recommendation. There are no technical objections from statutory consultees and our proposals are acceptable in principle. The site is sustainable and largely supported by the local community. Our crematorium would allow Rose Hill to operate at the capacity it was designed for, improving choice for bereaved families. The site is in a well-screened countryside location and not in the Greenbelt. We would use an electric cremator with renewable energy sources, which will produce 95% less One carbon minute, emissions Chair. than a traditional gas cremator. By granting this application alone, you will be You've ensuring one that Doncaster has enough spare capacity to be able to deal with all projected local population and death rate growth over the next 50 years. To quote your officer, this proposal is best able to address the need for a new crematorium and is less constrained in planning policy terms. It is therefore to be preferred over the proposals at Brodsworth and Conisborough. Therefore, I hope you will be able to support our proposals and vote in favour today, as we would like the opportunity to operate this public service facility for the benefit of the local community for many years to come. Remembering as an operator, we have an ongoing commitment in providing a first rate service that is a credit not only to us, but to everyone connected with Doncaster. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, Mr. Hodgson. Are there any councillors, uh, planning committee members wishing to speak? Councillor Cooper? Yeah, morning. Uh, thank you for that uh, presentation, very thorough. Um, I have one question to ask on the title, uh, on the proposal description. It actually says an area for nat for natural and traditional burials. Are we talking grave excavations here, burying coffins? Yes, we we can offer both traditional and natural burials on the site. The difference being traditional burials are the burials that actually carry demarcation with um, a, a small uh, flat headstone, which is usually what we use, um, and natural burials don't have any demarcation, but normally have a wildflower meadow planted on top. They're, they use biodegradable coffins and are generally uh, more uh, ecologically friendly. Take now, both offerings. Uh, what uh, my concern there is, of course, that um, we also, you know, historically we have cemeteries of our own where the space for burials has now expired. Um, what is the 
I mean, what would be the projected lifespan of your area, the app, the application area? How long do you project that that would last before you wanted more room for traditional burials? Well, councillor, I mean, what we find generally is as a crematorium site, the need for burial is, is actually quite limited. To give you an, an example, across the UK last year, we completed 15,000 cremations and only 90 burials. So generally, it does depend on the area. That said, there's enough capacity there for around 2,000 burials on the current red line. The local landowner is also able to offer extensions in the future, but we believe that we have enough capacity there for about 50 years based on rates that we normally see in crematoria. But again, it depends on the locality. May I just uh, continue there, Chair, if I may? Yeah, just I do have, some. just so you're aware, Councillor Cooper, quick, I do have, yeah, I'm just saying I've got three people waiting uh, to ask questions. Trying, so. Sorry, Chair, Thank I'm just you. trying to clarify there that we are looking in the future to possible further expansion into the countryside policy area. Uh, and I'm not making comparisons, direct comparisons with the other sites. It's just that the others are listed as crematoriums. This is the only one of the three applications, which we'll consider later, that is listed in traditional burials. So um, I, I've had the question answered. Uh, I've got the answers that I needed, Chair, so uh, I'll let you move on. Thank you very yes. much. OK, thank you for that, Councillor Cooper. If there's anything you want to ask to the officer as well, just make a note of it as well. Uh, Councillor Thelma Guinness. Councillor Cooper's just asked my question, Chair. Thank you. All right, thank you for that. Councillor Hoggarth. Yeah, just relating to long journey time, uh, how many miles is uh, this site from uh, Rose Hill? Because you did uh, the leaflets that were sent out to Canada set up in the north of Doncaster. Now, can you clarify north of Doncaster? North of, how many miles is it from Rose Hill? I don't have the exact mileage before me, but I believe it's in the region of about 10 miles. OK, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Cox. Thank you. Um, I've got two questions. Firstly, uh, both to officer and, and to applicant is I don't see any way of getting there via public transport. There's no bus stop. There, there's, there's nothing there. So how would you assume somebody that, that doesn't drive would get there? Um, and the other one is the ditches to the side and um, for the, the sustainable drainage plan. Is there anything in there for either of those two? Thank you. I'm happy to hand over to, to the officer if unless because I think probably more appropriate uh, to answer that question. Sorry, uh, Chair, can I just interject? Sorry, it's Stacey here. I just wanted to mention that I think we're going to leave officer questions to the debate as we usually do. So at this, at this time, members, can we just direct questions to, to the speaker? Is that all right? That's fine. Thank you for that, Stacey. So. OK. Uh, Councillor, your hand was up. It's gone down. Are you wanting to ask a question? Yes, please. Very much so. Thank you. <clears throat> Sorry, I lost you there for a second. Are you allowing me to speak, Chair? Yeah, it, like uh, Stacey just said, it must be, though, uh, regarding uh, for Mr Hodgson, not the officer question, because we're doing that at the end. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ms Hodgson, thank you very much for your presentation. Um, you, you're obviously uh, very active and well qualified in the funeral industry. Um, I, I must admit at this point, clearly I uh, have fulfilled a role in the in the funeral industry and 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 clearly know probably a little bit more about the operation of Rose Hill and crematorium than than my colleagues on the committee. Um, Rose Hill in Doncaster uh, is a, a fairly large crematorium in terms of having um, three facilities to cremate individuals, one cremulator, but only a single chapel. Your proposal offers a single chapel and a single cremation facility, and yet the needs assessment, which drives the whole business and and the material effects of of the recommendation to, to approve your uh, project uh, is based on that, that single needs assessment could you just outline your thoughts on because clearly you submitted a needs assessment and the council assist uh, submitted one ironically the the income which 
which is probably still drying in that it only came out uh, in November and we're in December. I'd just be interested in your opinion on the differences between the council's assessment and your needs assessment. And I wonder if I could just ask you to pick up in that uh, in, in that answer, uh, 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 just the issues of, you know, three crematoria at the existing Doncaster crematoria with a single chapel. And of course, you know, could could an existing crematory be expanded by increasing the numbers of chapels from a single to a second? And, and just the, the, the other, and this is a very tricky question, most people don't realise that in Doncaster we insist that relatives sign a, a decree that allows the deceased individual to be crema cremated necessarily on the day of the service. And clearly that means that you can you can extend your your service time if that's the right way of putting it. So individuals could be cremated in the evening on a second shift or things of that nature. People don't probably realise that. But clearly that would make a massive difference to the needs assessment if you had the opportunity to introduce second shifts and things of that nature. So so they're rather sticky points, but I think those are the those are the bears in the detail that unfortunately we're not we're not addressing. And I'd just be appreciative of your view on on things like that. OK, thank you, Councillor. Um, should we start with the single chapel and single cremator? So. As per our need assessment, we believe that there's a need for around a thousand services per annum, which will take the top level of pressure off Doncaster. Uh, that is very much in line with what the council's need assessment says as well. And actually, they're very much aligned in terms of the conclusions. In terms of our own capacity, we have capacity within that site from a cremation perspective to cremate up to 2,000 cremations per annum on one, cremator, on one cremator. We can actually do split shifts, as you say, and we can cremate into the evening. Um, the, the way in which the guidance is in terms of cremation relative to the day of the service is that actually you will have up to 72 hours to cremate. However, you are always giving the uh, bereaved family the opportunity for the cremation to take place on the same day. The reason that comes in is that we offer standard one hour service times. So that's eight services in a day generally. And but a cremation will take probably between 90 and 120 minutes to complete. So as you can see, cremation time takes longer than service times generally. But I believe that the capacity of this site would be around 40 to 50 percent in the first instance. And so there is a lot of spare capacity available for this site into the future as well. So by approving one of these sites, you will be able to cope and deal with any population growth or death rate growth that is projected over the next number of years. Thank, thank you, sir. Just, just a supplementary chair, if that's, uh, if that's yeah, okay. No, no problem, yeah, just, Councillor. Yeah, just, just, I just want to take that a little bit further. Obviously, you, you, you talk there about the capacity and 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 the seventy-two hour window versus the, the, the general belief. If I think that you know people go to a crematoria, they see the coffin disappear and 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 think almost the the cremation is immediate after. In that, the reality is that it can be very different. Um, just on the question of the needs assessment, the council every year has obviously uh, operated its crematory and there's been somebody in charge. And I, I think realistically, every person that's been in charge will have been asked, oh, do you want to expand? And, and, and the answer has always been a definitive no, for whatever reason. Probably, I suspect that it's management that have been unwilling to release the funds to invest in in expanding that capacity and yet Doncaster has found itself in a position where all of a sudden out of the blue we are 155 percent over capacity and then lo and behold in November of 2020 having had your application at least 12 months I would suspect there's a needs assessment pulled out that says, you know, goodness, Lord, we're, we're, we're 155 percent. And in November, we're going to commission a report. And the answer conveniently points. I mean, in your case, it's yours. And I don't want to be unfair to you. 
but right, just right, you know if you could just comment on the on, on what you believe in terms of you know how we've got to the position we've got to where we've had no assessment for so long and no need for so long and then all of a sudden we've ended up with you know a november result that 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 points that doncaster needs one i know you've clearly been lobbied and you know you deserve credit for that but i just wonder what your view on the local authorities assessment is well councillor all, all, all i can say is that we've been working because we were aware of the overcapacity at Doncaster for a number of years. So we, we've been here for five years looking for, for, to find a site, but it's not easy to find a site for a crematorium. There are a number of things that you have to get right. Um, and it, it's it's coincidental, I think, that three have, have come forward at the same time. I, I, I don't quite understand how that happened. All I can say is that we started five years ago. In terms of the need report, I think that it's very difficult with the need for longer service times, more personalised services that Paris families want and are demanding more and more. It's very hard for a site like Rose Hill to keep expanding and to do so on the same infrastructure that they have. Because, you know, you know, you can have two chapels, yes, but you have to share car parks, you have to share accesses, and it's very difficult to accommodate that. What this will do is it will take that top level of pressure off Rose Hill and allow Rose Hill to actually be at a better level of capacity so that they can actually offer more of the things that people are now demanding. Longer service times, more personalised service. And we can also offer that to another part of the borough. OK, thank you for that, Mr. Austin. I've thank now got you, Councillor. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, now I've got Councillor Beach. Right, I've put a camera on so you can see who you're talking to. Um, yes, uh, a couple, one point that Councillor Wood brought up, and, and like him, I perhaps know a little more than uh, most people about this sort of thing, uh, having been down this road before elsewhere. But um, I would say there has been a need for a long time. Um, Mr Hodgson said that um, he... So he's been looking at it for five years. I can tell you this, that in March 2016, I waited 24 days for my husband's funeral, which is not good. Um, but what I wanted to ask was, uh, you have one cremator, and, and this is really a bit of a, 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 a not very nice question to ask, but bearing in mind that people these days are uh, getting somewhat larger, will it take... Uh, the larger coffins, because I mean, we, we tend to view a coffin as almost much the same size. Uh, but um, now um, I know of one crematorium that did have a problem in that uh, they couldn't accommodate someone who was uh, extremely large and uh, it caused a great deal of trouble. Um, so it, will it take, a, uh, you know, is it bigger than the normal usual standard size that they used to be built? Thank yeah. you, Councillor. Yes, it's, it, you're right, it's a sensitive point, but we have always offered the largest cremator that's available, which uh, accommodates up to 42 inch wide coffins. Um, and uh, that is able to accommodate usually uh, the largest possible cremations that, that, that need to happen. Um, we also use, as I, I mentioned in my speech, an electric cremator, mm -hmm. which is a new innovation, uh, which allows us to, to actually produce 95% less carbon emissions and what that will do in effect is it will um, be the future I think. I think from you know in our sort of attempts to get carbon neutral by 2050 we will see electric cremation coming in across the board but we've just installed the first in the UK um, in Oxfordshire so so yes I, I think uh, cremation is very important as you say and um, and, and hopefully we'll be able to accommodate anything that we need to. Thank you. OK, thank you for that. Um, OK, I've got no other councillors uh, hands showing to ask questions, so thank you for your time. Uh, now I've got Mrs uh, Goodwin from Nigel Goodwin Funeral Director that's requested to speak in support of the application. This is now your opportunity to address the committee for up to five minutes. Please mute your microphone when you've concluded your submission and we'll let you know when you've got one minute uh, remaining. Um, would you like to begin? Thank you, Chair. 
And first of all, I'd like to thank everybody for this opportunity today. Um, I've, I've been pleased to hear that it has been determined that there is a need for a second crematorium in Doncaster. I don't have the statistics, I've not done a needs assessment, but I work in this industry and I've known, along with the rest of my colleagues and staff, uh, that this has been a need for at least six or seven years. So, like I said, I don't have the statistics to support what I'm about to say, but I'm saying it from ground level. So, we've concluded that this is needed over this period of time. The people of Doncaster need and deserve choice when making decisions for their loved ones. There are numerous funeral directors that they can choose. They can choose who they go to, they can choose which cemetery they use, burial, but when it comes to cremation, there is no choice. Currently, there is one provider, and that being the local authority. We must remember that people pay for this service. This is not without charge. So when people are paying for a service, they deserve to have choice. Choice of where they go, choice of when their service is for their loved one, the date and the time. And unfortunately, at times, we are restricted with that within the funeral industry. Families can wait, and I'm not you know, making this time scale up, but up to six weeks for a time and a date that is suitable for them. Even when it's not during busy periods, it can be up to three weeks. Now, of course, some people might say, well, there are services that they could still take nine o'clock in the morning, 4.30 in the afternoon, but the majority of people don't want those times and often they are left. So the times of the day that is suitable for most people to have a send off for their loved one are the times that makes them have to wait quite a lot longer. And it's interesting that we have had the opportunity to have these discussions with families over the last six or seven years. Those conversations have often arisen when we've been sat in loved ones houses, we're ringing up the local crematorium, Rose Hill, and we've been asking to book a time in. And it's, it's heartbreaking sometimes when we're coming back and we're saying, actually, we can't do it in two weeks. It needs to be three weeks. And we're sat there with families. So these discussions that we've been having with them have happened, like I said, for about six, seven years. Just to sort of um, continue with that thought, thinking about the population, we're about 310,000 uh, people. Prior to COVID, I've already said three weeks wait can be four to five weeks, at worst six weeks. We have always offered families the opportunity of using a crematorium outside of Doncaster in order to reduce that weight. And we have, we've used local uh, neighbouring crematoriums, but for the majority of Doncaster people, they say, no, I want to lay my loved one to rest in their hometown. And they deserve to be able to do that in a timely fashion. Now, during the COVID pandemic, due to the high demand of service times, family have had their service times reduced to a committal time only. We have been offering families committal times for several months now. We acknowledge that this <clears throat> positive action taken by Rose Hill in order to manage the demand, so we are not criticising in any way, that this was a good management decision. But had there been a second crematorium in Doncaster, one this minute, Chair. Have been necessary. One minute remaining. Okay. Just in support of Memoria and the crematorium plans that are in place, we believe that the proposed site is in a good central location in Doncaster, easily accessed from all areas. The site plans appear to have tranquil settings in which is ideal for bereaved families to attend for a dignified service for their loved one. Now, as a company, we have worked with uh, Memoria on numerous occasions at some of their other sites. We have found the staff there to display utmost professionalism, along with genuine concern for the families that they serve. The facilities at the site are of a very high standard. They offer visual tributes, varying options for cost-effective attendance services and certain type uh, services at certain times of the day. One hour services are standard 
that is not something that's time chair okay thank you for that thank you for that mrs goodwin uh, are there any committee members wishing to ask a question council wood uh, i've got your hand showing us up are you wishing to ask a question yeah just a quick question if that's okay chair yeah <clears throat> Uh, th thank you, Mrs. Goodwin, for for your comments there, and I, and I have to say, my heart is with you and, and and all the families you serve. Many of the points that you have made are 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 industry standard in Doncaster, and I've heard them and believed them as well for a long, long time. Particularly the six week wait for loved loved ones, which is almost uncalculable at a, at a time of loss. Just a just a quick question. Obviously, it, you haven't heard the other presentations that we're going to hear. Um, in, in a few moments time, but you probably won't get the chance to speak on others versus this particular one that clearly you're endorsing. I, I, I'd just like to, to, to hear your thoughts because clearly you have worked with probably the other providers as many funeral directors have in Rotherham where Dignity operate and, uh, and, and, and Horizon uh, uh, probably a little bit further afield. I wonder if you could just give us your flavour of assessment. It's perhaps not it, the detail of the planning, but in terms of the operator that you're endorsing and the and, and the service it would deliver to the people and the families of Doncaster. Because as much as this is a planning decision, I still think it's critically important as councillors that we think about how this is going to deliver for the people of Doncaster who will be who will be requiring the service at a time um, you know at which need need is never greatest for a, for a more supportive service, if that makes sense. OK, so I think out of the other two um, proposals, we have dealt with, with uh, dignity, um, I think, at the, the Rotherham site. One thing that I would like to say personally, and that is I know people at Memoria by name, and that's not because I'm their friends. Um, that's not because we've got any other relationship outside of a working relationship. But when you speak to the staff at Memory, you know exactly who you're going to get through to. I know Samantha's going to answer the telephone and we do have a good working relationship. Um, I think with regards to the dignity at Rotherham, I don't know the staff there on a first name basis. Um, I do think that at times that their um, telephone systems are managed, um, if they're not answered by the staff on site, it is diverted through to uh, a, a general... Can I just interject there? I uh, hope you don't mind. I would rather than... I don't think it's fair to comment on other directors, so if we stick to the um, actual application and your knowledge of the applicant that you're endorsing, I think that would be a lot better. Uh, fine. Thank so you. In terms of dealing with the um, staff at Memoria, uh, like I said, it's, it's always been utmost professional we know that we always get through uh, and that yeah all right thank you for that do you have a supplementary question councillor ward no thank thank you very much chair i would obviously just a small moment of thanks to all funeral directors that are doing a very difficult job at a very difficult time for all of us at the moment so thank you very much for all for all of your time ma'am thank you um there's no other councillor indicating the wish to ask a question uh, therefore, I'm going to move on now, and we've now got application two, which is one nine oblique zero three zero eight eight oblique F U L M, construction of crematorium including memorial gardens, associated car parking, a new vehicle access onto Green Lane on land south of Green Lane, Broadsworth, Doncaster. And again, I will invite Andrea Seward as the planning case officer to introduce this item. Andrea, over to you. Thank you, Chair. I'm just going to share my screen with you. Thank you. Um, just make sure you can all see that. Can you all see the screen? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. 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 So I'll start again with the pre-committee amendments. Um, we've got two speakers um, speaking in opposition. We've got Pamela Morehouse on behalf of the Joint Parish Councils and Councillor Cynthia Ransom, um, the like I said, they're both speaking in opposition to the application. There's a report amendment. The front sheet of the officer report should state that there's 54 individual letters of representation that have been received and not 14. Just want to show you the um, video footage. Just check that you can all see this as well. <clears throat> Can you yeah. all see the video? Yeah. 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 yeah.
Just to make you all aware that all the video footage is all one minute long. It's all being timed, so they're all exactly the same. <clears throat> Looking at the uh, proposed site layout, this scheme proposes a new crematorium, um, including memorial gardens, associated car parking, a new vehicle access onto Green Lane and ancillary works. In terms of the policy considerations for this site, um, the site's located within designated Greenbelt, where Greenbelt policy states that crematorium development is by definition inappropriate. So substantial weight must therefore be attached to this harm. Consent shouldn't be granted unless the benefits of the proposal clearly outweigh the harm to the Greenbelt and any other harm. Very special circumstances will exist when the benefits clearly outweigh the harm to the green belt and any other harm. Need can count as very special circumstances, but the issue of need is met by approving the Barnby Dunn site, which is less constrained by policy and it isn't located within the green belt. The consideration therefore is whether there's any residual unmet need after Barnby Dunn is granted. The consultant's advice is that by developing both Barnby Dunn and Brodsworth or Barnby Dunn and Conisborough would render Barnby Dunn unviable. If both Brodsworth and Conisborough were developed, the viability of one would be doubtful. Therefore, there's not sufficient need for two crematoria. Therefore, there's no issue of need that would count as very special circumstances. Therefore, in policy terms, the application is con contrary to Greenbelt policy. A landscape visual impact assessment has been submitted with the application and assessed again by the external consultants and there's minor impact on the openness of the green belt. In terms of the um, floor plans and elevations of the building itself, the building's divided into two elements. There's the waiting room area and the entrance foyer, ceremony hall, cremator room and associated offices. The main roof of the building, which would be visible from the elevated approach road, will have a green roof and you can see on the right hand side the plan showing the green roof. The building again is single storey. The proposed materials comprise the use of stone as an external material and the proposal is to um, use local stone. External render is also proposed. Um, a condition has also been included for details and samples of the proposed external materials to be agreed. This is a 3D visualisation. So you can see that the, the building is, it nestles in to the existing landform. Generally, the building has been designed to make a, a sculptural statement within the landscape. The urban design officer has commented that the design is well considered in relation to the surrounding landscape setting and could result in a good quality development, which is sensitive to context and attractive in its own right. The site would be well landscaped and a condition is included for details to be agreed. There's also um, the formation of a new access required. This again includes a ghost right turn. Um, there's also parking provision on site for 109 vehicles. Highways raise no issues with the access or highway safety subject to conditions. Yorkshire Water, however, raise objection because there's a mains water pipe that crosses the site near to the boundary and they require a site survey to establish exactly where this is before removing their objection. The applicant has stated that they would pay to divert the water main, which is an option that Yorkshire Water would agree to. So therefore, Yorkshire Water's objection can be overcome. There's been 54 representations received. These are primarily with regards to loss of green belts, loss of agricultural land and air pollution, which is already a problem. They say that the additional traffic and emissions from the facility will add to these problems. The transport officer has commented that the additional traffic generation isn't severe and wouldn't be discernible within daily traffic generation. The pollution officer is satisfied with the levels, um, advising that they will not exceed UK air quality objectives and the pollution officer does take into account the um, traffic surveys within the transport assessment. 
So overall, there's no objections from consultees subject to conditions. Nevertheless, on balance, this application is recommended for refusal as there are no very special circumstances that can be demonstrated that would outweigh the harm to the Thanks, Chair. Thank you for that, Andrea. Okay. Right, I've now got Councillor Cynthia Ransom, who is a local ward member, who was asked to speak in opposition of the application. This is now your opportunity to address the committee for up to five minutes. Please mute your microphone when you've concluded your submission and we'll let you know when there's one minute <coughs> remaining. Councillor Ransom, would you like to commence? Thank you, Chair. Uh, Cynthia Ransom, Ward Member for the Sproper Ward, Member of the Joint Rural Parishes, Joint JRP, representing the rural villagers in the Sproper Ward, Councillor for Brodsworth Parish Council. I represent the residents who have objected to this planning application for the Brodsworth um, Crematoria. I am mindful of the Council's advice that there is a need for one more crematorium in Doncaster. However, this need can be met elsewhere where the impact on the environment is not as severe as it is in the Brodsworth site. Our objections are crematoria developments is by definition harmful to green belt. This application is in the green belt. The application is inappropriate development, no very special. So the area of land is the very best, most versatile land and at present is being farmed. Four, the surrounding area is one of openness with more agricultural land. The Greenbelt policy is to keep land permanently open, paragraph 133, and to retain and enhance landscape. The Greenbelt has a key role in protecting openness of the landscape and topography are fundamental to the appreciation of the countryside. This application would be visible from the A1M, Green Lane and Brodsworth Country Woodland Park. A development such as this will be an infringement on the landscape and openness. The building of a large car park is not sympathetic to the area's local character. This application is for 6.3 hectares of agricultural land, which is twice the amount taken of green belt as the other two applications. This land would be lost to agriculture this is the best, most versatile land, and it is in conflict with CS18. The joint rural parishes were successful in December 2018 for an appeal for Moto Service Station, which lies south to this application. The inspector walked the area and commented, Building on this area of land would impact on openness, thus contradicting Greenbelt policy. The Secretary of State endorsed this and the appeal was dismissed and planning was refused. Land on the western side of the A1M is designated as an area of special landscape value. Doncaster seeks to conserve, protect and enhance land resources in both terms of quantity and quality. I would therefore ask the Planning Committee to refuse this application uh, for Brodsworth in favour of the proposed site at Barnby Dunn, which is less harmful to the environment and more beneficial to Doncaster. Thank you, Chair. Right. Thank you for that, Councillor Ransom. OK, do we have any questions for Councillor Ransom? No? OK, then. Thank you for your time. OK, I've now got the Parish Councillor, Pamela Moorhouse, who is a Parish Councillor for Brosworth, that has requested to speak in opposition to the application. This is now your opportunity to address the committee up to five minutes. 
please mute your microphone when you've concluded your submission. Uh, Parish Councillor Mulrouse, would you like to commence? I'm going to let you know you've got one minute remaining. Thank you, Chair. I'm Pamela Morehouse. I'm a member of Brodsworth Parish Council and Secretary of the Joint Rural Parishes. We support the officer's recommendation to approve the site at Barnby Dunn for an additional crematorium, should the need be accepted. However, if the committee don't accept the recommendation, we strongly object to the proposal by Dignity on the following grounds. The relevant policy numbers are identified in the officer's report. We believe this is inappropriate development in Greenbelt with no special circumstances demonstrated. There are also material considerations and other harms to the green belt. First, the removal of the best and most versatile agricultural land is in breach of planning policy, which seeks to protect it. Dignity commissioned a report from Savills, the same company that manages Brodsworth Estate, who owns the land. According to the report, the land has been downgraded from DEFRA's grade two to 3N3B. I question the report's objectivity. Grade B land does not support good yields of crops, such as oilseed, rape and beet, which had recently been grown on it. And this suggests a better quality land overall. The long access road proposed for the crematorium increases this amount of loss, which also impacts on the spatial openness of the green belt. The proposed site is within 1.6 kilometres of Brodsworth Hall, and English heritage is highly sensitive to any development which spoils the views from the hall. The crematorium will clearly be visible from it. Dignity makes no reference to the visual harm from Brodsworth Community Woodland, though the site is clearly visible from this amenity. Members of the committee may recall Moto's application to build a service station in the same field. The inspector in charge of the appeal stated that the MSA would be clearly seen from the community woodland, causing significant harm to the openness of the green belt, and the Secretary of State dismissed the appeal. Moving on to transport. Sustainability is a major development and is a material consideration. A crematorium needs to be accessible and well connected to transport. This site is the least likely location to deliver this of the three proposals. The intention of siting a crematorium here is to relieve pressure on Rose Hill and attract business from Barnsley and Rotherham. Dignity's transport assessment focused on Green Lane with no assessment of the impact on the A635 or the A1. Dignity suggests negligible increase in traffic despite parking provision for 109 cars and five funerals a day and cars are the obvious mode of transport. Users travelling from Barnsley and Rotherham um, would obviously choose the A635, an already very congested and polluted route. The second worst in Doncaster, designated an air quality management area. The A1 Junction 37 roundabout is the most likely exit for cars from Barnsley and Rotherham, and Highways England have consistently informed the NBC of congestion here, and Doncaster have clearly said that no development is to take place alongside the A1 in North Doncaster. This proposal conflicts with this advice. The NBC's environment team raised concerns. They said the site is isolated, inaccessible and unsafe for those travelling by foot or cycle. There is little or no public transport. The bus services is limited, no cycle paths or footpaths along this unlit rural lane. This is not sustainable. One minute, Chair. Thank you. Both Barnby Dunn and Conisbury sites are more accessible and better connected. Road safety is an issue along our rural roads. Green Lane is 40 miles an hour, not 30, as stated by Dignity. The access to the site is 50 miles stretch of road with potential conflict from the community woodland car park. Dignity states a negligible impact on road safety with one collision at Corby and Gretton Brook Road. No such roads exist in this area. Collisions at Pickburn Crossroads are frequent and very high on the A635 at Mar and Hickleton. With two fatalities this year, we strongly object to the Dignity application. It's not sustainable or inappropriate and inappropriate development 
removing from the green belt with no special circumstances land and there is no right where the, where there are viable alternatives beg your pardon we ask the committee to reject this proposal thank you chair thank you for that do we have any uh, committee members wishing to ask a question councillor wood You're muted, councillor. Councillor Wood? Have we lost Councillor Wood? No, is he is just muted. Is there? Is is that? Sorry, sorry, I did. I'm sorry, there's a bit of a lag, isn't there? You press the unmute and then it doesn't <laughs> unmute and then it does when it doesn't. Sorry, I, I do apologise. There's obviously a bit of a lag with so many people on the court. Um, and, and rural internet and all the rest of it and, and that that actually leads in very interesting thank you council morehouse for your for your presentation there um just a couple of questions that i'd like to pick up on um the, the first is to ask you 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 talk there very significantly about the secretary of state actually getting involved in an application on you know largely the same field i i think you said so, I, I, and, and that seems very significant in terms of planning terms of a Secretary of State. And I just want to be absolutely clear that I've understood you correctly, that there was a defence there of the, the Green Belt upheld by the Secretary of State, which I, I just don't think you can get any higher, if I've understood correctly. That's the first question. And the second question is in relation to obviously transport to and from. You talked about limited transport routes to and from very rural locations and I wonder if you could just give us a little, little bit more of a, a flavour of the the rurality of the location to the extent that if, if you were a funeral attendee coming from a distance and probably getting on a train and a bus as indeed some people do just how, how easy and difficult it might be to find your way to such a remote location and then having found your way to the end of the driveway trudge probably a quarter of a mile if it's that it might be a little bit more to the actual entrance of the crematorium and how you might feel having done that in a downpour I'd, I'd just be interested to know how that would you know fit with with somebody you obviously represent a rural ward whether that's something that people would acceptedly put up with or whether you whether you might have a different opinion on it It's not unmuted. We can hear you. Oh, right, good. Um, first of all, um, the as I mentioned, the transport assessment by Dignity doesn't assess the impact on the A635 or the A1. Now, these are very, very congested roads, uh, as I mentioned. Uh, the business viability is dependent on their needs analysis, um, where users in the catchment travel from Barnsley and Rotherham. One of the needs <laughs> the two that you know that we would attract business from Rotherham and Barnsley. Therefore, there would there would be quite a lot of traffic along those roads, and um, we know that the roads are polluted. There's there's um, the air quality management zone in Mar and Hickleton. There've been two fatalities this year at the crossroads in Hickleton. The A1, as you know, is very congested. The site visit. I travelled along the A1 at the same time as that site visit. I was I was on it in an hour and a quarter between two, uh, some junction 37 and 36. So it is incredibly congested. Um, <clears throat> uh, you say <clears throat> you say about the transport to and from. Well, it, there there are very few bus services. There's one bus service from Barnsley to Doncaster. It goes. Um, five times a day, so the two hourly intervals, um, and uh, one of them would be too late for um, visitors to the crematorium because it's after half past four. So it's an unlit road, as I've mentioned. There are no footpaths near the um, crematorium site. There are no cycle paths, uh, and it's a 50 mile an hour speed limit. So there are some conflicts with the community woodland. It's a small car park there. However, the MBC have also noted that um, 
some cross traffic would have a problem there. Um, there are no bus services from Rotherham to the site, so you would have to go into Doncaster and then wait. If you miss the bus, it's a two hour wait. So it's um, it's not sustainable. And the journey times also from Barnsley take far more than an hour to get to the site. Um, does that answer your question, Councillor Wood? Yeah, it answer, answers the question on how difficult it is, obviously, to get yeah. there. I, I, think I, I will be Wood asking also, others the same. Yeah. I think Council would also ask you to confirm you mentioned about the Secretary of State on that piece of land. Yes, it is. Uh, is yeah. that correct, Council Wood? <laughs> uh, yes, uh, yeah. There was, an, there was the appeal. There was an appeal um, by Moto for the service station there, and the Secretary of State dismissed that appeal. The site was in the same field, but lo much lower down towards the Barnsley Road. Um, the Secretary of State said that um, um, she, she, no, I'm sorry, not the Secretary of State, the inspector in charge of that appeal walked up to the community woodland and looked across that site and said it was clearly obvious um, any building there and that would destroy the openness um, of the site and it would create a lot of visual harm. Thank you for that. Okay. You, All right. Thank you, have, thank you, Councillor. You have any other questions, Councillor Wood? No, Chair. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Do we have any other councillor? Um, okay. Councillor Cooper. Thanks, Chair. It was just a matter of clarification there to Pamela and for John. That mo that Moto service station, John, is the one that we turned down. And is, is it not right that that site was adjacent to Barnsley Road and therefore is a good distance from this site? Can it be classed as the same field? I just need a point of clarification there. Um, I'm sure that's a good distance away from the Moto site even though I agree with a bit about the openness of the countryside and everything else, and I agreed with the inspector's decision because we turned it down originally, but it is a distance away. Yeah, Councillor uh, Cooper, I would imagine that's best asked when we come to the officer's questions. All right, uh, Chair. Some verification on that. Um, okay. okay. Uh, Roy, your hand was showing. Is there a question that you wish to ask or a verification? <laughs> Uh, no, Chair, I was just going to try and clarify that point for members at this moment in time to stop the debate continuing on that basis. But if you want to deal with it at the officer's questions. Yeah, I I'd rather, there, yeah. yeah, I'd rather keep everything, uh, questions to the officer at that set time because that's what we've agreed. Can, can, okay, I, this... can I just, just say my impression of that? It is a very large field. I accept that, Councillor Cox. Um, the building of the uh, crematorium, the actual building, is a lot closer to where the MSA would have been. And it certainly is closer to the, the actual crematorium is closer to the community woodland. So you would see it more clearly even than the motorway service station. OK, thank you for that clarification. We've got no other committee members um, showing that they want to ask a question. So thank you for your your time. Uh, we now will move on to application number three, uh, which is plan application 20 oblique 00334 oblique FULM crematorium with cer uh, ceremony hall, memorial garden, uh, and areas remembrance and associated parking and infrastructure, including a new access of Sheffield Road on land off Sheffield Road, Coddesbury, Doncaster. And again, I want to invite Andrea over the planning case officer to introduce this item. OK, over to you, Andrea. Thanks, Chair. I'll just share my screen again with you. Thank you. <laughs> um, there's pre-committee amendments um, with this application as well. We've got two speakers. Um, we've got Stephen Byfield and Councillor Ian Pearson, both speaking in support. Stephen Byfield is the applicant. Um, there is a, a report correction on page 77 of the third paragraph. This has been amended. So this now reads, and I will read it through for you just to uh, confirm it. The need for another crematorium could count as very special circumstances. An external consultant has confirmed that there is an existing unmet need for an additional crematorium in the borough other than Rose Hill, but has advised that by developing the site at Barnby Dunn would meet most of that need. 
whilst the scheme is not in accordance with the development plan, on a balance of considerations, when weighed against the moderate harm to the wider character of the area or countryside, highway, ecological and ar arboricultural networks, the scheme will best need meet the need for a new crematorium. This must be given substantial weight in its favour to de justify departure from the development plan and it is not located within Greenbelt. The Barnby Dunn application is therefore recommended for approval. We've also received a late, very late representation um, received from the advice given to the applicant by, by their barrister. This raises the following three main points in relation to the officer's report. The first point references the Greater London Council case referred to in the legal advice report to members. For clarification, the legal advice note does not suggest that which site has the least environmental impacts is the deciding factor in determining of the applications. Rather, it's a very important factor alongside need. The second point refers to the error in relation to the third paragraph on page 77 of the Conisborough Officers report. The Barnby Dunn proposal does not accord with the development plan as set out in paragraph 10.1 of the Barnby Dunn Officer report. The Conisborough report has therefore been corrected as per the pre-committee notes. The third point advanced is that the officer report does not consider capacity at other existing cross-boundary crematoria. It's considered that the proposals will have a beneficial impact on crematoria in neighbouring boroughs. Indeed, this is given limited to moderate weight and see paragraph 9.35 of the officer report. However, the report focuses on the impact on the existing crematorium in the Doncaster borough in terms of need, the proposal in accordance with the development plan and other material considerations cross-boundary capacity has therefore been considered and appropriate weight attributed. We've also had uh, another very late representation. This has been received from local councillor um, Phil Cole, um, objecting to the application on account that there is no exceptional economic case for the crematorium on Greenbelt land. And he also raises concerns about an already busy road. So <clears throat> I just want to again show you the um, video footage. You can all see that, can you? Yes, I see it. So looking at the uh, proposed site layout, this scheme proposes a new crematorium with ceremony hall, memorial gardens, um, garden of remembrance and associated parking and infrastructure. Um, it also includes a new access off Sheffield Road. This again is a Greenbelt location where policy states that crematorium development is by definition inappropriate. So substantial weight must therefore be attached to this harm. Consent shouldn't be granted unless the benefits of the proposal clearly outweigh the harm to the green belt and any other harm. Very special circumstances exist when the benefits clearly outweigh the harm to the green belt and any other harm. Need can count as very special circumstances, but the need 
the issue of need is met by approving the Barnby Dunn site, which is less constrained by policy and not located within Greenbelt. So the consideration is whether there is any residual unmet need after Barnby Dunn is granted. The consultant's advice is that developing both Barnby Dunn and Brodsworth or Barnby Dunn and Conisborough would render Barnby Dunn unviable. And if both Brodsworth and Conisborough were developed, the viability of one would be doubtful. So therefore, there's not sufficient need for two crematoria, therefore no issue of need that would count as very special circumstances. So the application is contrary to Greenbelt policy. A landscape visual impact assessment has been submitted and assessed by the external consultants. There's minor impact on the openness of the Greenbelt. The floor plans um, show that the building is divided into three elements the reception and waiting room area, the ceremony hall and the cremator room and associated offices. The building has been designed for each of these separate elements with monopitch roof sections that would be linked by connecting flat roof spaces. Each pitched roof segment will have a green roof, so these planted roofs will be seen as green wedges in the landscape, so that's the green um, um, coloured areas on the plan that you can see there. The building's single storey, the proposed materials comprise an extensive use of larch clad into the walls as this will naturally weather to blend with the surrounding countryside over time. Windows and doors will be in silver grey powder coated aluminium and are conditions included for details and samples of the proposed external materials to be agreed um, should committee be um, deemed to, um, minded to grant consent for this. The 3D visualisation of the site that you can see, um, the urban design office has commented that there are no major design issues um, with this proposal. It's been thoughtfully designed. The site would be well landscaped and the conditions included for details to be agreed. As I said earlier, a new access is proposed along with parking provision for 100 vehicles. So the formation of the new access is required from Sheffield Road. This also includes a ghost right turn and this also includes a pedestrian refuge within the ghost island which will enable pedestrians to safely cross the road into the site. There's hedgerow removal needed to accommodate this new access. Um, the tree officer has requested the position of the access um, be amended to reduce the need for the hedgerow removal. Highways, however, have already negotiated the access position, uh, but which cannot be moved due to the land levels and the visibility on Sheffield Road. So the tree officer is now satisfied with this, subject to any conditions for landscaping to be agreed. A, a reduction of the speed limit on this road has been raised as an issue by parish council and ward councillors. However, this is not a material planning consideration that would warrant as a reason for refusal of the application. Highways raise no issues with the access, highway safety, but subject to the usual conditions. There's no objections from any other consultees regarding other issues subject to mitigation by conditions. There's been 14 letters of representation received for the application, but the majority of these make the point that they're happy with the service provided by Rose Hill and if a new facility is required, DMBC should be providing it. Most have commented that if there has to be a new, um, a further crematorium, this would be the preferred location. Nevertheless, on balance, the application is recommended for refusal as there are no very special circumstances that can be demonstrated that would outweigh the harm to the green belt. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for that, Andrea. Uh, we have the applicant, Mr. Stephen Byfield, that has requested to speak in support of the application. Uh, this is now your opportunity to address the committee for up to five minutes. Please mute your microphone when you've concluded your submission and we'll let you know when you've got one minute remaining. Uh, Mr. Byfield, would you like to commence? Thank you, Chair. Um, hello, my, my name is Stephen Byfield and I'm a founder of Horizon Cremation. Four years ago now, my business partner, Jeremy, told me the story of what had happened when his sister-in-law died leaving two young kids. It was a tragedy that gripped his whole family and was made far worse by the fact that they had to wait over five weeks to get a funeral date 
And when they got to the funeral, the building was old. It was tired with water running down the inside of its walls. And for Jeremy and his family, it was a chaotic and a traumatic experience. A week after this conversation, my, my daughter's husband, Dave, uh, committed suicide. And we too had to wait nearly five weeks for a funeral. And when we got there, we struggled to get 200 people in and out of a chapel and hold a meaningful service in a 30 minute slot. And again, it was awful. Neither of these experiences were in Doncaster, I hasten to add. But they were the experiences that caused Jeremy and me to set up Horizon. We started this business because we wanted to do some good by building high quality facilities in places where they're needed. I mentioned the experiences because they're not uncommon and because they are the reality behind lots of facts and figures about need and demand that you'll have read in the last few days. Crematoria are an essential, though often overlooked, part of our community infrastructure. In this case, everyone agrees that a new crematorium is needed because Rose Hill in Doncaster and Barnsley and Rotherham crematoria all have the same problems Jeremy and I experience. There are long waits for funerals and short service times. What is not agreed is which of the three applications before you will best meet that need. I feel that the officer's recommendation is flawed. You have three crematoria under pressure, yet the officers say you should refuse the two schemes that are situated between the three struggling facilities, and instead you should approve the application that will help only one of them. How have the officers reached this conclusion? In paragraph 935 of the report, they justify their recommendation by saying you should only consider the impact that will be felt within the boundaries of Doncaster Borough. There's no planning law that says this, and to me, it defies logic. You wouldn't do it for other essential pieces of infrastructure. If people in Barnsley and Rotherham and Doncaster were on long waiting lists for cancer treatment or dying because of a lack of intensive care beds, you wouldn't build a new hospital in Armthorpe and then tell the Barnsley and Rotherham residents to build one themselves. No, you would build the hospital in a location that would serve everyone. This is exactly the same. Crematoria like hospitals are essential community infrastructure. If I was making this decision, I would want to see a calculation of how much each proposed site would improve each of the existing crematoria. In that way, I'd be able to make an informed decision. That calculation exists, but it's not in the officer's report. I could show you a summary now, but it would take two or three minutes to explain that I don't have. The conclusions that jump out, though, are that Barn Be Done brings relief to Rose Hill, but it does absolutely nothing for Barn to or Rotherham. The two sites to the west also relieve Rose Hill, though to a slightly lesser degree, but they also relieve Barnsley and Rotherham. Overall, the most effective of the three application sites is Conisborough. Actually, a more effective solution is two crematoria, one at Barnby Dunn and one at Conisborough. This solution gives you capacity in Doncaster and Rotherham and a much better situation than exists now at Barnsley. Now, officers have told you that two permissions would result in one of the approved schemes, Barnby Dunn, not being viable. But this, I'm afraid, is mistaken, and the calculations in the PMA report that led to it are fatally flawed. There is a lot of capacity here, enough for two planning permissions. One minute remaining. Ladies and gentlemen, we're approaching Christmas, and you're in the fabulous position that no matter which of the three applications you approve, you will do some good, because whichever one you vote for, a new crematorium will improve the experience of thousands of people every year who are going through a difficult time. But I urge you to base your decision on which application will do the most good. On that basis, if you believe that only one new crematorium is needed, then you should approve the scheme at Conisborough. It is the better of the two Western applications because, as you saw in your site visit, it's on a main road, it has good public transport connections, and you can walk there on a footpath lit by street lamps. It can bring other benefits too, such as a reduction in the speed limit along the A630. If you approve Barn be done, a substantial to the rest of Doncaster will still remain. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. OK, do we have any committee members uh, wishing to ask Mr Byfield a question? OK, thank you for that. Thank you for your time, Mr Byfield. Um, I will now ask... Uh, 
Sorry, sorry Chair. Chair. Oh, I sorry, Charlie Yoss has just popped up. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. All right. Uh, with, with regarding to convert, it's like, it's further away from um, Roseville, so it would, I think, probably benefit people further away than uh, them than the uh, Bambi Dun one, you know, how far is it away from uh, Roseville compared to the others? Well, I was, um, it's six miles, as, as the crow flies. I, I heard the conversation, the question put earlier to, to Mr Hodgson and did the calculation, but I wasn't able to do it on the roads. But as the crow flies, it's six miles from um, Rose Hill and, and um, the memorial site's actually three, three and a bit. So it's further away, but it, it is to the west of Doncaster and would serve a different group of people who currently have to drive all the way through town to yeah. get to Thank you. OK, thank you for that, Charlie. Uh, Councillor Beach. Yes, thank, thank you, Chair. Um, in the interest of fairness, and I would have asked this of the uh, second application, but no one was present. Um, two questions. Uh, is there just one cremator and are um, is it able to take uh, the, the larger size um, coffin that I uh, asked the other the other applicants? So I'd like, you know, it's in the, in the interest of fairness. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, it it's, uh, has a cremator hall big enough for two cremators, but our intention is that in the early days, as it gets up to speed, we would only install one and then install a second when the, the need was there. Um, uh, in terms of the coffin size, yes, it will be able to accommodate the biggest um, uh, coffins that we currently find. We we cremated in our facility in um, the Clyde Coast last week someone who was 37 stone, so it is quite possible to do that in the cremator we're fitting. Thank you for your answer. Not at all. Okay, uh, Councillor McGuinness. Thank you. Um, in the interest of fairness, again, I'll ask you, um, You've just on your site. Is it just a memorial garden, or will people be able to bury cremated remains or have full burials? Uh, it, it, we're just all we all we want to build is a crematorium. There will be no burial space. Um, people will be able to inter cremated remains on the site if they want to, but we do that above ground. We don't actually bury, but they will be able to keep them there. Thank you. OK, thank you for that, Councillor McGuinness. Any other council wishing to ask a question? OK, thank you again, Mr Byfield. Um, OK, uh, Councillor Ian Pearson, the local ward member, has requested to speak in support of the application. This is now your opportunity to address the committee for up to five minutes. Please mute your microphone when you've concluded your submission and we'll let you know when you've got one minute remaining. Councillor Pearson, would you like to commence? Thank you, Chair. Good morning, everybody. Uh, can I run through a, a couple of things very quickly? One, there is no issue of travel and transport. There's a bus every seven minutes. It's good at links to it, uh, which is the total reverse to going to Rose Hill. At the moment in this area, going to Rose Hill is the biggest nightmare, and therefore the vast majority of residents in this area actually either go to Rotherham or Sheffield for cremation or burial or interment. So the figures that are being given uh, somewhat bemuse me to say the least. I should say I've had involvement in green belt construction of crematorium on a number of previous occasions with local authorities in the Midlands. So I was somewhat surprised at who has been used as a consultant, because I'm, I'm of the opinion that they had some involvement with one of the applicants in the past. The comments made about the horticultural quality of the site, again, if you know this site, it's actually very poor quality, not very uh, good for growing anything, including trees, and the recommendations for the landscaping will definitely enhance and improve the area and give some vitality uh, in relation to the triple SI, which is just further down the road. It, it is somewhat confusing that this site was ever given green belt status 
bearing in mind the local pollutions uh, from ancient history. Many of the residents in this area are extremely happy that something has been suggested, which means that they're not traveling across uh, boundary, because I'm sure you're aware moving bodies across borough boundaries and things, uh, leads to people arriving late and traffic jams and all sorts of things that are appalling when you've waited anything from four to eight weeks to get your slot, which is then half the time that it used to be because they're that busy. The comments about the number of deaths in the next years, I, I think somebody needs to think how long Rose Hill can survive as is due to needing to meet new environmental standards for cremation in the future. And obviously all of the commitment by Doncaster to the fact we have an emergency in relation to biodiversity and the environment, which is being polluted by uh, cortages being driven many miles and across the town centre to get to Rose Hill, and obviously many miles to get to the Rotherham and Sheffield sites. So please don't draw the boundary because, as you can appreciate, Conisborough. We're only two miles from the boundary of Rotherham. The other locations were a heck of a lot further and a lot more traffic issues. The actual design of the building fits nicely into the area and obviously would actually add something to the area uh, surrounding the water tower and the like. The hedge that was mentioned is a constant problem at the moment because it's not cut and the cyclists that use it there for cycling purposes are often forced out into the road because as i say it's One not minute, really cut back. my final sort of comment is that need should be based upon need for south yorkshire and not just for doncaster uh, and uh, the future of this planet needs to think on that we need appropriate cremators. So please support this application and reject the inaccurate statements made by planning officers in the report. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for that, Councillor Pearson. Do we have any committee members wishing to ask a question of Councillor Pearson? <clears throat> Okay. Yeah. Yes, Chair. Thank you, Chair. For some reason, your hand's not showing on, on my screen. So right. over to you, Charlie. Yeah. Uh, regarding the uh, using Rotherham and Sheffield, quite a few from Coningsbury and Mexborough area. How, how would, do you think that impacts on Rose Hill? Uh, Ian? Does it make such a, you know, like Rose Hill's operating at 155%? If the residents from all the residents that from Coningsbury, Denneby, Mexbury area are going to uh, Rotherham. If they then went to Doncaster, what capacity do you think Doncaster would be um, operating at? 200% plus. Because as I've just indicated, we are literally on the boundary, I'm sure you're aware yeah. that uh, we are there, Coningsbury, and then it becomes Rotherham and lots of residents, you, you're right, you, to mention Mexborough and Swinton, that won't go to Rose Hill because it's such a journey, takes so long. They opt, as I, as I say, for uh, Rotherham and Sheffield and those that want to be uh, buried under a tree or what have you, uh, again, the, the space and capacity, uh, they go elsewhere because uh, they don't want to be spread on the rose trees in uh, Rose Hill, which is, of course is where the ashes are done. At this time, they want a more modern type of uh, storage or spreading of ashes. So again, the change in burials and cremations 
we need to be staying far more uh, environmentally friendly, shall I say. OK. Thank you. Any other committee member wishing to ask a question? OK, thank you for that. Thank you for that, Councillor Pearson. Thank you very much. Thank you for the okay. committee's time. Thank you. It's now time for members of the committee to debate the three applications. However, before the debate commences, I uh, will ask Stacey to come in with some legal advice. Stacey? Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, before members commence the debate, I wanted to mention that this is really your opportunity to carry out the comparative exercise in relation to the three applications before you. So in that exercise, the first question will be, how does each scheme impact on need? They all need to demonstrate need and the extent to which they meet that need will impact the weight you attribute to them. The second question is, how do the schemes impact on other factors? So that includes looking at their effect on development plan and national planning policies and applying the relevant tests. In the case of applications two and three, you'll be applying the Greenbelt test of very special circumstances. So do the benefits of the, of the schemes clearly outweigh the harm to the green belt and any other harm? Substantial weight must be given to harm to the green belt. So the demonstration of very special circumstances is a very high bar. You then come to a planning balance on all three applications before reaching your decision and taking a vote. I just wanted to mention those points uh, and I hope that's helpful to members. Thank you, Chair. OK, thank you very much for that, Stacey. OK, I'm now going to ask committee members to indicate by raising of the hand if they wish to comment. OK, Councillor Cooper. Thanks, Chair. Uh, yeah, I want to uh, comment on the um, first part of the background to this. We had one applicant state that they've been working with the council officers since 2015. Now, we have a situation here where we've got the local plan that was submitted for independent examination in March. That's well through that process now. So this has been uh, the first applicant, I think, it, who said that they've been on it since 2015 with officers looking for a suitable site. What we have is the local plan that's now going through the system. Um, the, neither of these sites are listed in the local plan for development as a crematorium. Um, I can think if officers have actually been engaged with one or two or three of the applicants, I can think of numerous sites that we've actually passed planning permission on that they could have been steered in that direction of. Um, we've got Wheatley or Road that was changed from industrial to housing. Part of that would have been ideal for a crematorium. You've got Unger Hills site, uh, council owned, which has gone for housing. We've had Carview, uh, Dominion site with Keep Moat. We've got the developments on West Moor Link. Now, these have all got planning permission for dwellings. Um, surely part of those sites could have gone for a crematorium. Um, and now we're actually faced with an option of one site in the countryside policy area and two Greenbelt. I think members have actually been placed in an invidious position here by officers if they've been working that long with these applicants. Now, we know that there's an identified need. The consultants have clearly um, ratified that need. Um, I just think that uh, it could have been handled better with the availability of land. I cannot see why there's just these three sites that are clearly going to have an impact on the countryside. There's, there's no way that either of these can be constructed without having an impact on the openness. Um, and personally, whether I'm allowed to speak my opinion now, I won't be supporting any. That's uh, all I've got to say on it, Chair. Uh, if officers okay, want thanks. to comment on that. Thank you for that, Councillor Cooper. OK, I've got Councillor McGuinness. Um, can I just ask Andrea for clarification? Am I right in thinking the first application, the client said that they've been looking for five years, but they've only been working with the council for about a year? Sorry, sorry, councillor, was that to me? It was, yes. Uh, sorry. Um, yes, they, um, we in fact have worked with all three applicants with um, pre-application advice last year. So they were all roughly around the same time. 
So there's been no that the first application when he stated that he's been looking for five years. That's just him, the, the company themselves. It is. It's yeah, been nothing to nodding. do with, with council or council offices. No. no. Good point. So thank you. Thank you for that. We've got Councillor Wood. Thank you, Chair. Just checking that you can hear me there because of the lag. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, thank you. Um, just just a, a couple of questions to officers, really. Well, 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 first, just a short comment. Obviously, this is part of debate. And uh, I think that we have exposed some of the embarrassing truths of the funeral industry in Doncaster today, I think is a good thing. I think I think it's I think it's just it's more than unfortunate. It's disgraceful that relatives have to wait for six weeks to be able to find slots in Doncaster. And I, I, whilst all of the um, the applicants um, that we see today would clearly provide an improvement to that, um, you know, that, that makes it very difficult to, 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 you know, figure between them. I think nevertheless, the honesty that we've heard from Mr. Hodgson uh, this, this morning in terms of recognising that and being so open is a credit to him. Um, and that application. But I think more importantly than that, as Stacey has told us from a legal perspective, we have to decide, therefore, based on which provides the least harm across the borough. And from my perspective, and this is the question to the officer, obviously we have a, a Secretary of State's decision supporting the refusal of a previous planning application um, in two green belt sites in Doncaster, in, in the sense that it, it, it relates to one of the sites. Um, it, it, is there any other planning uh, precedents that, that would trump that at the moment? I mean, because when I hear that there was a site that had a, an application literally on the other side of the road, I know we've had a little bit of debate about whether it's the same field or not, but I, I think certainly it's within a stone's throw uh, if it isn't the same field whether there's anything else that Stacey could tell us about, because at the moment, my mind seems to support the officer recommendation, which is to pick the site with the least harm and, and the one clearly that, that is now supported by a Secretary of State to the extent that, you know, we can't, we can't cross a Secretary of State, we would lose an appeal. It's as simple as that. So I think, is there anything else that I've missed there or am I interpreting it correctly? And that you're therefore saying that there's there's, there's nothing could, that can trump that, Stacey. Is that is 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 that right? Thanks, thanks, Councillor Wood. I think Roy has expressed a wish to answer that question, so I'll just hand you over to him. Okay, no problem. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you, Councillor Wood. And uh, as I indicated to Chair earlier, I, I would like to just give committee members a little bit of a, uh, an overview of that previous decision. So I've managed to pull up some site plans of where that was and you can relate that to the that's in relation to the, uh, the the Brodsworth application so I'm just going to share my screen but before I do that I think I will just say the one thing which is the the old planning adage that each application is judged on its own merits so you must you can't do a a, a straightforward comparative exercise of that something adjacent to a site was refused on a certain basis and therefore that can be carried forward uh, to another site which is a totally different development in terms of nature and design but I'm just going to share my screen just so you can at least get some uh, indication of where that uh, previous decision was taken. But the, the, the sorry to interrupt but the principles and maybe Roy you can just just expand on this as part of your answer but the, but the principles in terms of the development um, that, sorry, the, the protection of the green belt under under national planning policy and CS3 in Doncaster remain the same, though, don't they? I mean, clearly the the Secretary of State didn't didn't come out against the green belt. It was or the or the or the the public inquiry came out supporting the green belt. There's nothing that undermines the green belt. That 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 that's 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 what I just want to to be clear on. That, that, that is absolutely correct. Uh, the, the development that went through an appeal was found by the inspector to be inappropriate development in the green belt, uh, and there were no very special circumstances put forward in that case uh, to override that protection. Uh, quite interestingly, I suppose the, 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 the one thing that is uh, relatively similar is that that was in relation to the need for a new motorway service area. 
Uh, and what we're talking about here is the need for a new crematorium. So need was something that was considered in that previous decision. Uh, however, it wasn't deemed uh, uh, appropriate to overcome the, uh, the, the harm. So can you see my screen, uh, members? Yes, we can see your screen. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so just to cite, make sure members are absolutely sighted in on the right uh, area, I'm just going to ask you to refer to your agenda pack. And if you can look at our page, it's page 70, which is the colour photograph. It's appendix one of the proposed site layout for the Broadwood site. I'll just give you a couple uh, uh, 30 seconds or so to just turn that up. Page 70, you said, yeah. Page 70, it's appendix one, it's the large A4 colour photograph. Do you have Sorry, that, is, members? Is, yeah. is, that page, is that page 70 as specified on the bottom of the pages, or is that page 70 of the report as we're looking at it online? Sorry, let me just... All right, I do. I, oh, I, I, I don't know. It's pay, it's pay, yeah, it's page seventy page of the yeah. of, of the actual report. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Okay, so all I would say is, if uh, you can see my hand on my screen at the moment, can you see yeah. this little uh, bit sticking out here? This is the bit of woodland sticking out, and then if you look at your colour photograph, you can see towards the bottom of the site. That's where that bit of woodland is sticking out, and the facility kind of wraps around that. So in general terms, the facility is being sited here. Uh, the access road would be coming up the screen before then you get onto the, the road, which is Green Lane. So we're talking approximately here. The red line boundary on your screen is the site of the motorway service area uh, uh, appeal decision. Uh, so it's close, but it isn't the same field. But still, this is all part of the same uh, kind of washed over green belt. So I hope that just gives members a bit of an indication to clarify that point. Thank you for that, Roy. Thanks, Roy. Okay. Uh, Councillor, do you have any other questions? Because I've got uh, uh, Councillor Hogarth and Councillor Healy also wishing to ask questions. No, no, I, th I think Roy's explanation of the green belt, the importance of it, is the. Is the is, is, the crux of the issue it's still in green they've still got two sites in green belt and one that's not you know okay. i think that, that that to me is the is the critical point thank you for that councillor hogarth yeah it's relating to the locations i think environmentally wise with that because i think i'm the closest to rose hill so that's not going to have a make any difference on environmental wise with regard to, to traffic going to the uh, to services, whereas I think Mexpre or Conisbury site will have a make an impact. There'll be less travelling for a lot of people when they choose to go to the closest, where Bamdon's not going to make much difference. So, plus, I think with uh, Bamdon, they've got scope to put another uh, oven in as opposed to just one at uh, Bamdon. Okay, thank you for that, Charlie. Um, Councillor Healy. Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. I don't have an actual question. It's it's really a comment listening to what other people uh, have been saying at, at the latter part of this um, uh, discussion. Um, and um, I'm certainly coming to uh, the view that uh, in supporting uh, the first one, um, I am also aware that um, in terms of questions that have been asked by other councillors, that we need to be raising similar questions elsewhere. Uh, and I'm thinking about the long term policies um, implications um, regarding the, the crematorias uh, uh, in terms of it within Doncaster. But I recognise that it, and it has been proven um, that we need another crematoria. The question is where? Um, I've also listened to Councillor Pearson as well. Uh, uh, and whilst um, I understand his position, um, I, I am 
much more, hmm, how can I put it, parochial, shall I say, uh, in the fact that um, I'm looking at what Doncaster needs, not Rotherham or Barnsley. Um, and therefore, I am uh, heading towards the first application in terms of, of approval. Um, and I hope that other members consider that the same same way. And lastly, if I might say, is that uh, Councillor Wood, you know, you do some throw some um, uh, curveballs, uh, Jonathan. But um, I, I accept what the officer has said regarding the appeals. But for me, this application has to stand on its own merits, regardless of what's gone before. And for me, uh, I'm not approving it and wouldn't approve it. That's all I've got to say, Chair. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, I've now got Councillor Beach. Thank you, Chair. Um, I First of all, I, I will say that I, I would support uh, the first application. And the reason for that is, one is uh, I take, I, under my own steam, visited the area of all three sites uh, to familiarise myself before this uh, rather complicated uh, applications. But also, um, where I live, uh, which some of you may know is about a mile from the North Yorkshire boundary uh, in on the outer side of Askin, I would um, differ with Charlie's, uh, Councillor Hogarth's sum summarise, that we would travel the same distance, di dis same way to the to Barnby Nunners to Rose Hill. No, we wouldn't. Uh, most definitely not. I, when I had to go to Rose Hill, it was a long journey, lot of traffic and was, well, just not what you would want. To go from where this part of, of Doncaster um, and the villages round about, it would be much, much, it's much, much quicker to go across country as it were. So therefore, a, it's more pleasant if you happen to be looking, but also I checked the mileage and it's roughly five miles. That five miles can be done in far less time uh, than than. Uh, and I think the need for uh, the crematorium is for this side of town. Um, it's a long, long way to Conisborough uh, to to a funeral, um, though it's not so far to Broadsworth. I think Broadsworth is. Um, is not not the place for it, but I um, I would support the uh, the Barnby Don one. So thank you. Thank you for that, Councillor Beach. Councillor Wood, is your hand still up, or have you? Yeah, it is, yes, it is, up, it is up. Yeah, I'd I'd like to commend my 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 councillor colleagues. Actually, I, uh, particularly John, who who was people who know me know that, that John is one of the, the councillors I admire more than any, perhaps in Doncaster. His, his 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 enthusiasm for the job and his his ability to cut through a lot of the, the with respect crap that we hear is 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 legendary. Um, but I, you know, and I, I side with him on this. I think I think the first option is the one that we have to endorse. I'm, I'm sorry if he thinks I'm throwing in curve balls. You know, m maybe I'm known for that, and the media normally pick up on that. But I think you know it, it's a rare occasion occasion that I I do endorse officer recommendations. But I have to say. They, they seem to nail it here. They, they really do with option one. But I, uh, but I do, I do fundamentally believe the option that 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 we're not talking about is that we need to cut these waiting limits in Doncaster, and and to be able to do that and support families at a time when they have the greatest need is is the biggest service we will do for people uh, at, at, at this time of year and and the struggles that we've had throughout the last twelve months. So I endorse option one and. And look forward to the boat and, and commend my councillor colleagues Iris Beach and, and, and John this morning. Thank you. Thank you for that, councillor. Uh, councillor Cox. Thank you. Uh, again, same as Jonathan's just said, I'm, I'm echoing, I'm echoing, I'm echoing all to what, what John and Jonathan have said. That it, it's for me, I'd support, I, I will support the first application. The only issue I, I have with it is the the access for public transport and you know it doesn't doesn't appear to be any there and and that's it i mean the bit that i'm kind of lost with is comparing the nhs to a a private company that's a crematorium and we know that people are in hospitals in doncaster that do use out of authority hospitals because the nhs isn't 
a crematorium is run by a private company. But, you know, that that is just a comment. I just like clarification on public transport. Thank you. OK, thank you for that, Councillor Cox. Can we have some confirmation, please, regarding the um, public transport, please? I could probably pick up on that, Chair. Thank uh, you. The, there, there is the 84, 84A and 84B that do run along Armthorpe Lane that come from Brex Lane. So obviously that's a connection from Doncaster and from the north from Stainforth and Bambi Don, uh, where they, they, they sort of have the, those connections in. There isn't currently obviously a bus stop located in there because there is no demand, but that doesn't mean that there isn't, there wouldn't be an opportunity to be able to put something in there. OK, thank you for that. Uh, have you got a supplementary question, Councillor Cox? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no, that that's great. If, if you know, so long as so long we know that people can't always get uh, by car, then yeah, if that could be put in somewhere, that'd be fantastic. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that, Councillor Beach. Have you got another question you'd like to ask us? No, thank you. I'm fine, Chair. Okay, right, so I'm just going to ask again: Are there any committee members wishing to ask a question? OK, thank you very much. Um, OK, prior to the reading of the recommendation and voting on each of the applications, can I invite Andrea to provide members with a summary of the application we've considered? Thank you, Chair. Um, the external consultant's report commissioned by the Council identifies that Rose Hill is operating at 155%. So it's over capacity and there's therefore a need for another crematorium to relieve the pressure on Rose Hill. He concludes that the Barbie Dunn application site would provide the greatest impact on the current over capacity at Rose Hill and bring the highest number of people within a 30 minute drive time of a crematorium for the first time. The consultant's conclusion is based on drive time catchments and not planning policy. So each application must be considered on its own merits, but the consideration of need is common to all three. So in summary of application um, one, the Barnby Dunn site is located within countryside policy area and the proposals inconsistent with local planning policies EMV2, EMV4, CS2 and CS3. MPPF policy considerations require a balance between recognising the intrinsic character of the countryside and meeting the community need for crematoria. Unlike Greenbelt, there's no requirement to demonstrate very special circumstances to overcome Greenbelt policy, sorry, countryside policy. Nevertheless, the proposal is inconsistent with countryside policy and therefore should demonstrate a need for the development to override the harm which would allow a departure from the local development plan. An external consultant has established that there is a clear and expected need for another crematorium within the borough, which could be met by any one of the three proposed application sites. However, two of those sites are located within the Greenbelt, whereby crematoria development is by definition harmful to the Greenbelt. Substantial weight must therefore be attached to this harm. The Barnby Dunn development would not cause undue harm to residential areas, the highway network, archaeology, ecology or arbor arboricultural networks or the wider character of the area. Whilst the scheme is not in accordance with the development plan, those conflicts are only slight and are therefore given moderate weight. On the other side of the balance, there are material considerations that indicate the development should be granted. The material consideration is that this scheme will best meet the need of the borough for a new crematorium. That must be given substantial weight in favour. The external consultant has therefore considered the need for all three proposals and concludes that the Barnby Dunn site would best impact on the current overcapacity at Rose Hill. This weighs heavily in favour of this proposal and outweighs any harm to the character of the countryside defined by policy EMV4. As such, the need for another crematorium is deemed to outweigh this policy harm and justify a departure from the development plan. This application is therefore recommended for an approval. 
In summary of application number two, the Brodsworth site is located within land designated as Greenbelt. National Greenbelt policy and local policies EMV3 and CS2 and CS3 state that crematoria development is by definition harmful to the Greenbelt. Substantial weight must therefore be attached to this harm. Consent should not be granted unless the benefits of the proposal clearly outweigh the harm to the Greenbelt and any other harm. It's only if this test is met that the necessary very special circumstances exist to grant consent. An independent external consultant has established that there is a clear and expected need for another crematorium within the borough, which could be met by any one of the three proposed application sites. The consultant's report advises that developing Barn be done, not Brodsworth or Conisborough, would bring the greatest impact on the current overcapacity at Rose Hill. Therefore, neither the Brodsworth site nor the Conisborough site are considered suitable alternative sites that would outweigh Greenbelt policy. In the assessment of any residual need, the external report concludes that by developing any one of the two Greenbelt sites would make the Barnbidun site unviable, such that there would be insufficient need to demonstrate very special circumstances to outweigh the harm to the Greenbelt. The harm to the Greenbelt by virtue of inappropriateness therefore carries substantial weight and as such the application is contrary to both local and national Greenbelt policies. A landscape and visual impact assessment has been submitted and which has been assessed by the Council's external consultant. This concludes that there will be minor impact on openness of the Greenbelt. This therefore carries substantial weight against the proposal. The development would not cause undue harm to residential areas. There are no issues in terms of its design, the highway network, archaeology, ecology or arboricultural networks subject to mitigation by conditions. Yorkshire Water have raised objection due to there being a main water pipe that crosses the site. As the exact location of the water pipe was unknown, Yorkshire Water are maintaining a holding objection. This issue could be overcome by the applicant diverting the water main and which would satisfy Yorkshire Water. The objection raised by Yorkshire Water is therefore not insurmountable. The benefits of the scheme do not clearly outweigh the harms to the Greenbelt and any other harms, and so very special circumstances have not been demonstrated. So overall, on account of the above balancing exercise, the proposal is recommended for refusal. In summary of application number three, the Conisborough site is also located within designated Greenbelt, where national Greenbelt policy and local policies EMV3 and policies CS2 and CS3 state that crematoria development is by definition harmful to the Greenbelt. Substantial weight must therefore be attached to this harm. Consent should not be granted unless the benefits of the proposal clearly outweigh the harm to the Greenbelt and any other harm. It's only if it, that test is met that the necessary very special circumstances exist to grant consent. The external consultant has established that there is a clear and expected need for another crematorium within the borough, but which could be met by any one of the three proposed application sites. But the consultant's report advises that developing Barn be done, not Brodsworth or Conisborough, would bring the greatest impact on the current overcapacity at Rose Hill. Therefore, neither the Brodsworth site nor the Conisborough site are considered suitable alternative sites that would outweigh Greenbelt harm. In the assessment of any residual need, the external report concludes that by developing any one of the two Greenbelt sites would make the Barnbidun site unviable, such that there'll be insufficient need to demonstrate very special circumstances to outweigh the harm to the Greenbelt. The harm to the Greenbelt by virtue of inappropriateness carries substantial weight and as such the application is contrary to both local and national Greenbelt policies. A landscape and visual impact assessment has been submitted and which has been assessed by the council's external consultant which concludes that there will be some impact on openness of the Greenbelt. This therefore carries substantial weight against the proposal. However the applicant does agree with the council's consultant's conclusions in this respect. The development wouldn't cause undue harm to residential areas. There are no issues in terms of design, the highway network, archaeology, ecology 
or arboricultural networks subject to mitigation by conditions. The positive impact on the quantitative need for a new crematorium in neighbouring authorities is given moderate weight. But the benefits of the scheme do not clearly outweigh the harms to the green belt and any other harms. And so very special circumstances have not been demonstrated. So overall, on account of the above balancing exercise, the proposal is recommended for refusal. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for that, Andrea. I will now read out the recommendation within the report for application one. Is there a proposal to grant planning permission subject to conditions detailed in the report? Um, Can I ask? One moment, please. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Can I ask? Can you ask the committee members moving and seconding the motion to identify themselves when speaking? Is there a mover for the recommendation? Yes. Councillor Jonathan Wood, I'll move it, Chair. Okay. Yes, Thank you. Chair. OK, so that's moved and seconded. I will now ask for each member individually if they are for or against the motion or if they wish to abstain. Councillor McGuinness. Agree. Thank you. Councillor Anderson's not present. Councillor Beach. For. Thank you. Councillor Cooper. Against. Thank you. Councillor Cox. For. Councillor Healy. For, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Hogarth. Against. Councillor Pickering. For, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Wood. Uh, for Chair. And as Chair, I also support the recommendation. The recommendation is agreed and the application has been granted. I will now read out the recommendation within the report for application two. Is there a proposal to refuse planning permission? Can I ask the committee member moving and seconding the motion to identify themselves when speaking? Is there a mover for the recommendation? Chair, Councillor Jonathan Wood, I'm very happy to move a recommendation to refuse. Just a small point of order as well, if I if I could make that. Councillor Wood, yep. It, yeah, the, the point of order is simply, obviously, just, just to be clear, having approved the first application, that removes any and all need. Just to confirm that from Stacey, please. Hi, Councillor Wood. No, I think what we're saying is, I think you've heard from Andrea, that there is uh, insufficient residual need left over for the two great Greenbelt schemes once Barnby Dunn is consented to justify very special circumstances such that uh, the, the harm to the green belt is outweighed. OK, so it, so it doesn't remove, uh, uh, sorry, it, does, it doesn't remove the, the, the need, but it, it removes it substantially enough to re remove all uh, idea that, that, that any harm on the green belt would, would, would support uh, a positive applicant. It means that we, we're essentially, you're, you're recommending still that we refuse it. Yep, that's the officer's recommendation, and that's based on the external consultant's uh, need report. OK, then I'm very happy to to to, to forward a motion to refuse uh, plan application for option two then, Chair. OK, so that's the recommendation. Um, it's to refuse plan permission. Councillor Wood has moved that. Do we have a seconder, please? I'll second, I'll second that. it, Steve Cobbs. OK. Yeah. Right, OK, I'm going to ask each member individually if they are for or against the motion or if they wish to abstain. Councillor McGuinness? For, Chair. Councillor Beach? For, Chair. Councillor Cooper. For Chair. Councillor Cox. For Chair. Councillor Healy. For Chair. Councillor Hogarth. For Chair. Councillor Pickering. Councillor Pickering. It's muted, Chair, so. For Chair. Thank you. Councillor Wood? Yes, for Chair. I think that's unanimous. You. Hopefully yep. you'll join us. And I will join us. So that's unanimous. Uh, the recommendation is agreed. The application has been refused. I will now read out the recommendation within the report for the application three. Is there a proposal to refuse planning permission? Can you ask the committee members moving and seconding the motion to identify themselves when speaking? Is there a mover for the recommendation? 
Chair, I'll put my name on it and take a hat trick. Very happy Thank to. You. Yeah. Thank you. Is there a seconder? Second, oh, second chair. chair. Councillor McGuinness. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I will now ask each member individually if they are for or against the motion or if they wish to abstain. Councillor McGuinness. For chair. Thank you. Councillor Beach. For chair. Councillor Cooper. For chair. Councillor Cox. For chair. Councillor Healy. Four chair. Councillor Hogarth. Four chair. Councillor Pickering. Four chair. Councillor Wood. Four chair. And I'm also for the proposal. The recommendation is agreed. The application has been refused. Members, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the business at today's meeting. Thank you for attending. I would like to thank everyone for their attendance and input and declare the meeting concluded. And I'd like to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year as well. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Chair. Happy Bye. Christmas, everyone. Yeah. Try and have Thanks, a good Chair. one. Merry Christmas. Stay safe. Bye. Thank you very much.